Welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. We are looking at plate tectonics, and this video is basically going to focus on the actual everything you see online or textbooks. Obviously, they discuss this, but they kind of breeze over it in a way that is kind of like uh, as a as a background to the other things that occur because of this amazing system of plate tectonics being moved by the convection currents. So we're going to look at you know what the actual plate is you know how big they are what the uh the, how to classify these plates who basically um pioneered the the idea that these plates were a big jigsaw puzzle and also the uh some of these big ones and small ones and how to basically classify them uh, and how we are basically finding out new plates with ever increasing uh, technology we can find new plates so yeah join us now on the earth science classroom investigates plate tectonics so first things first what is a plate so a plate is the the crust and the lithosphere combined now, technically, lithosphere is part of the upper mantle or the mantle in more chemically chemical characteristics. And then the crust is a separate entity. Now, the crust is around 1% of the uh, thickness of the Earth. So it's an extremely small outer layer of that solid um, rock, whether it is basaltic with the ocean or uh, granitic, granitic with the continents. But the plate being moved by the convection currents in the asthenosphere, which are constantly working underneath lithosphere, this is what's moving. This is what is being pushed around, pulled around, which was started obviously with Wegener's theory of continental drift, and now has developed into this very comprehensive plate tectonic theory. And it's the best one we have to explain all these different processes and things happen on the Earth. For example, it explains very nicely earthquakes, the generation of earthquakes, the elastic rebound theory, and also volcanoes and the location of volcanoes, the magma uh, composition, size, volume, uh, even the type of eruptions we get are very consistent with areas of the world that we can understand through tectonics. And we have the subduction, we have the trench. Uh, let's go ocean trenches, which are fantastic to research, um, the ridges and the rise, rises in the oceans, and also the rift valleys on land. For example, the East African Rift Valley, which we have a video on, the uh, basin and ridge area in Southwest America, and there's other areas around the world that have this these kind of like um, spreading centers. So these are the more famous parts of plate tectonics that you focus on, the outcome, the product. Now, I want to look at today is the actual plates themselves. So there's a history to this. Now, obviously, with the emergence of sonar after World War II and the um, discoveries uh, by Hess in 62 of the, 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 the submarine guyotes, the, um, the submerged volcanoes and islands, all across the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean, the ridges and rises, these elevated areas of continuous mountain ranges and volcanoes uh, in the oceans, uh, to basically the, the subduction areas and trenches. Now, the deeper parts of the ocean that were on the edges of some of these continents uh, in the ocean off the coast. And it took, um, obviously, that was more of a detailed thing. But before that, before that, a Japanese scientist, Wadati, or I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I, Wadati, uh, in 1935, so 1935, did some research and found uh, the depth of foci, earthquake foci, that were consistently located around the edge of the continents. And then further research um, came from uh, Binoff uh, in 1945, where Basically, there was a greater understanding and scientific detail of these earthquakes in terms of the depth 
and the uh, the outline started to outline the the borders or the boundaries of some of these major plates. For example, the work by Wadali was done around the Philippines. So obviously you had the, uh, the junction of the Philippines, the Pacific Ocean, the Eurasian plate and North American plate around Japan, you know, these, these very uh, consistently large earthquakes to, to study. And we started to develop this understanding that um, from the ridge where it would be constructed, the ocean plates, the ocean crust, the traveling time across across the surface by convection currents, and then the destruction through subduction at these these convergent plate boundaries and these active margins, where the earthquakes were highlighting this process happening all around uh, the Earth. So we started to get this understanding of where the plates are based on earthquakes. Now, the volcanoes also helped. The volcanoes were a couple of hundred kilometers away from the actual um, boundary, which we'll get to later on with our active margins. But the earthquakes were the kind of like the highlight um, to, to show where the plates, uh, plate boundaries were. So, from the 50s and 60s, obviously, with the growing technology and the application of using satellites and GPS and navigation and the uh, basically the application of military tech for science and the budgets increasing and uh, agencies like NASA becoming very um, interested in how the Earth works in terms of climate and physical processes, we identified roughly 52 52 plates in general, large ones, small ones, uh, in 2003. So further analysis by various scientists um, and obviously earthquake data improving, we then by 2016 identified over 159 plates. Now, these were broken into uh, different sizes, different uh, classification. So the big ones, the big ones in terms of the land area they occupy, I mean, or not land, but the, the area they occupy on the Earth's surface uh, were called or are called major plates. Okay, small ones are called minor. And obviously there are but extremely small, and these are called um, micro. Now these micro plates are being discovered uh, pretty much, you know, frequently by scientists looking at certain areas of the ocean or land um, components in more detail, uh, looking at different earthquake data, depth, and obviously uh, using satellites to track the movement of certain areas of plates. Now we think that these plates are all consistent, but over time they can break up, they can reform. It all depends on the convection currents, the mantle plume physics um, of the asthenosphere and how it moves over a long period of time. But micro microplates are fascinating because we can find out uh, a great deal about these areas uh, of the Earth that we didn't before and really you know, have a greater understanding of what's going on. So let's look at the major plates. The major plates, the big ones, okay? So when you do research into these uh, plates, you can find articles, um, sites that do document different numbers based on their classification. I have generalized these, uh, but the major plates don't really change. It's more on the minor plates and micro plates that could fluctuate on what they classify as. But the major plates, there are seven of them, okay? And this is in based in um, order of size. So the first one is a Pacific. Okay, Pacific plate. This is an ocean plate, oceanic crust. And no surprise, it's the largest one. It's the, the ocean that covers a third of the planet. It's huge. Uh, you don't always appreciate the size of this ocean, which sits on the plate, uh, because most world maps are centered around the continents, with England being the center, uh, America's to the left, 
and the Asian Eurasian uh, continent with uh, Australasia to the right. So I don't really get the, the, the appreciation of how big the Pacific is, but it's huge. It covers 103 million kilometers or square kilometers its area so square kilometers all right and next one okay next one so i'm gonna put i'm gonna put uh i'm gonna put one here for the biggest okay the second biggest okay is the north american plate all right so this is basically about 75 million square kilometers now from the map we see here it's not quite clear this is a flat projection it does kind of elongate the higher latitudes so anything above like 60 degrees north and south of the equator is kind of elongated so you get this uh, sense of the antarctic eurasian north american plate being absolutely huge but in in reality because you are making a three-dimensional spherical Earth into a two-dimensional projection, it does distort uh, the um, areas and sizes. So on most uh, maps, you'll see Greenland being huge, but really it's not that, that size at all. Uh, and in comparison, Africa and Pacific Plate are in reality very large, but not in this map. Okay, so number three, we're looking at the Eurasian plate. Okay, the, the combination of Europe and Asia on this uh, mostly uh, continental plate, and also we'll put, we'll put a C for continental plate on North America and Eurasia there. All right, so Eurasian plate comes in just a bit smaller at 67 million square kilometers. Okay, fourth one, we're looking at the African plate. Okay, African plate is mostly again continental and it covers a land area of 61.3 million square kilometers. Fifth one, and there's six one right here and seven down here. So six one. So fifth one is the Antarctic plate. All right. This again is mostly continental. All right. And well, majority is continental. It covers a land area of around 60.9 million square kilometers. Coming in uh, number six is again, it's um, it can be Australian. There we go. So the Indo Australian. Some, um, some like this map I drew here does separate the Indian um, subcontinent on its own funnel plate and has the Australian plate separate. But a lot of textbooks and research articles do have uh, these two combined as an Indo Australian plate, which is again larger. So this one comes in at uh, about 50. 3 million square kilometers. All right, so basically it's half the size of the Pacific plate. It's huge. And again, this is this is mostly uh, ocean. It's mostly ocean, really. I mean, you've got the, the country of Australia and India, but mostly it's the Indian Ocean. Um, and then last but not least, we have the South American. We'll put South American. So this one is going to be coming in. I can't really do it. I'm going to put it over here. So it's going to be 43.6 um, million square kilometers. And uh, again, it's mostly a continental plate. So the majority of these major plates are continental, with the outlier being uh, Indo-Australian, which is, I say, over half ocean, and obviously the Pacific Ocean, which is really large um, in terms of that. So. The breakdown is obviously the major plates are Eurasian, North American, Pacific, South American, African, Indo-Australian, and the Antarctic right there. So now we're on to the microplates. One article mentioned that the the definition of a major plate is anything, any plate that has an, a square kilometers over 20 million. So as you see here, the there are 11 listed here in terms of the 11 largest 
uh, minor plates that they, they can be disputed and say there's only seven or eight and some are micro plates. Um, but generally, this is a agreed upon list where I have the Somalian plate up there with 16.7 million square kilometers down to the New Hebrides and Juan de Fuca plate, um, basically being the smallest and even classified as a micro plate in some aspects. So actually the Juan de Fuca plate, which is definitely you know four times smaller than the next biggest uh, micro plate, New Hebrides plate. So again, you can see most of these are oceanic uh, plates. Uh, with only the um, you know Philip, uh, the Arabian Somalian being a larger uh, continental, so that's kind of like in comparison, on, in contrast with the major plates, most of them being mostly continental. So these these uh, oceanic uh, minor plates uh, cover different areas of the world, and as you can see here with the larger ones on the map, being you know, Cocos, Caribbean. Um, the Arabian, uh, the Philippine, uh, the Scotia plate here, the Nazca plate is very large. Again, they're not always, um, you know, to scale, but you, know, you can see where they are and generally with location. And when we get into the convergence and creating earthquakes and volcanoes, these plates become a hot topic because they are they they are the center of attention to create these natural disasters or these natural processes. So these minor plates are very important and to understand uh, how fast they move as well. So these uh, have varying speeds, varying, varying velocities where they are being created or pushed from the constructive plate bar, uh, margin, the sperm center or the divergent plate boundary. And some of them do uh, go under as subduction zones and uh, active plate margins. So, for example, the fastest one that I could see was the Nazca plate that was going at 15, to 17 centimeters per year, which in terms of plates is very quick. Uh, the Pacific plate is moving kind of in this direction from at a, a northwest, basically, um, at about 11 to 15 uh, centimeters per year, which is the fastest uh, larger major plate. Um, you know, other plates are moving a lot slower. The minor plates generally are around. Uh, some around two, like Somalian, is around two centimeters per year. Likewise, the Arabian and the Caribbean, oh, two centimeters per year. And then you get like the Carolina plate in the Pacific, looking at around eight to nine centimeters per year. Uh, one of the Fuca plate, two to six, depends on where it is in location. There's always a range because of thickness, um, the speed of the lava coming out at the spreading centers, the uh, different densities, uh, a lot of geophysics involved in the transform plate boundaries and how smooth or how much um, friction there is between the plates. So the, the, the range of, of velocities can vary greatly in, lo in different locations, especially with the larger plates uh, like the Pacific or the Nazca or even the um, Indo-Australian plate. So it's important to understand the difference in plates, major versus minor, and the micro plates that are basically lodged in between, um, moving basically in different areas of the planet. And they create these natural uh, processes and natural features uh, through tectonics. So I'll be doing like a top 10 uh, things to focus on with tectonics video. I'll also be looking at the, uh, the similar map of tectonics and looking at the correlation of divergent transform and uh, convergent plate boundaries and where they are. And we'll link it into the, to the, uh, the plates, major and minor plates as well. So guys, I hope you enjoy the video and you can um, get some out of it. And I hope you guys can enjoy some more videos in this series.